Welcome back everybody. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer and this is the channel for you if you are looking for information on all things women's health and aesthetics. In last week's video, we talked about progesterone, how we make progesterone and nutritionally what we can do to maybe support progesterone production. In this week's video, we are talking about estrogen. Specifically, we're talking about the way that we metabolize estrogen through the body and detox to get it out. So first of all, if you like the content that we are putting out, go ahead and hit the like button um, and make sure to hit the subscribe button and share the video with your friends and family. That would really help us to get our content out there and help more people. So when we're talking about estrogen metabolism, um, why do we care, right? Why do we care about estrogen metabolism? Well, we care about estrogen metabolism for a variety of symptoms. So when you think about somebody being estrogen dominant, you guys may have heard that term before, um, estrogen metabolism plays a big role in this. So what does that mean? It basically means that um, you have a higher ratio of estrogen in the later phase of your cycle. So in that luteal phase, which we talked about last time. And sometimes that can be um, in relation to progesterone, right? So if you have questions on progesterone, last week's video is a great one to go back to. Um, when we think about being estrogen dominant, some symptoms of estrogen dominance are going to be PMS, endometriosis, adenomyosis, fibroids, heavy clotty periods, um, and a lot of those kind of issues around your period. Um, the other reason why we care about estrogen metabolism is going to be for estrogen-based cancer risk, right? So our ability to get rid of our estrogens through our bodies so that we decrease our cancer risk. Um, so this video is going to be broken up into a three-part series because estrogen metabolism happens in three parts. Um, in the first part, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about the first pathway that estrogen goes down to get taken out by the body. And there are three options in that because apparently everything comes in threes in this video. And that's going to be the good pathway, the bad pathway, and then okay pathway, depending. Um, so that's first phase, and we're going to be talking about that today. In next week's video, we are going to be talking about the second phase of estrogen detox, which is going to be methylation. Methylation and um, using an enzyme called COMT. Um, basically, in that phase, what we do is we package up the um, metabolites that came through the first phase of estrogen detox, and we get them ready to go out through the GI tract. The GI tract is the third phase of estrogen detox, right? So that's actually how we get rid of it out of the body. And that plays a big role in whether or not we um, reutilize those estrogens as opposed to clearing them. So today we're talking about phase one. So what do we mean by this? So after you've used your estrogen, right? So after estrogen's done its work in the body and it's supposed to go through the liver to go through a phase one detox. Um, what this means is that estrogen hits the liver and then it goes down three pathways. There's the 2-OH pathway, the 4-OH pathway, or the 16-OH pathway. And basically the 2-OH pathway is good. The 4-OH pathway is bad. It has a higher risk of cancer. We'll talk about why. Um, and then the 16-OH pathway can be good or bad. It doesn't have it inherently doesn't have quite as much of a risk for proliferation or the growth of things, um, but it does have a metabolite that does actually increase proliferation, so it can be a little bit of both. So we're talking about this. Um, the 2-OH pathway is the CYP1A1 pathway. Um, and basically when we go down that and we detox our estrogen down that, you still end up with a um, intermediate, a metabolite that is considered a quinone. So quinones can be stable or unstable. And basically by being stable or unstable, you can determine the amount of damage that it can cause in the body. The key component of this is even if you go down the good pathway, you still have to get rid of it through methylation and COMT, which is next week's video. Um, so if you go down the 4-OH pathway, which is the CYP1B1 pathway, that pathway is, is associated with an increased cancer risk, increased proliferation, increased symptoms of estrogen dominance. That's because those metabolites, first of all, they form quinones that are unstable and can form something called a depurinating adduct, which can cause DNA damage. So if we're going down the 4-OH pathway, the nice thing is even if we do that, we can still get rid of that through methylation and COMT, but if we don't, it has a higher risk of causing issues. So um, 
the most important thing with the 4-OH versus the 2-OH pathway is how it how it binds to the estrogen receptor. So the metabolites of the 2-OH pathway weakly bind to the estrogen receptor. That means that it really doesn't stimulate your estrogen receptors that much um, and causes less issues in the body. The 4-OH pathway very strongly binds to the estrogen receptors. It has a lot of affinity for the estrogen receptors, so it causes a lot more symptoms, a lot more issues. Um, and then the 16-OH pathway, which is kind of the medium pathway, we'll call it, the actual metabolite of the 16-OH pathway, so estriol, the actual metabolite of the 16-OH pathway doesn't actually, doesn't strongly bind to the estrogen receptors. It pretty weakly binds to the estrogen receptors. And actually, estriol uh, binds more strongly to estrogen receptor beta, which is found in things like the vaginal tissues, which is why we use estriol vaginally to help with um, vaginal dryness. But there is a metabolite of um, the 16 OH pathway that can bind more strongly and cause more proliferation. So that's why the 16 OH pathway is a toss up. It depends on whether or not you're making the metabolite of the 16 OH pathway that does tend to increase more proliferation and give more symptoms. So if we're thinking about kind of phase one estrogen detox, what can we do about this, right? So I will say that in the majority of patients, you very rarely would want to start on phase one as a treatment strategy because um, you want to make sure, right? We don't want to just increase the good pathway because you can still end up with that quinone that you need to get rid of that metabolite that you need to get rid of through phase two detox. So normally starting at phase two detox, or even if the GI is a concern, phase three detox, which we'll talk about, are better ways to make sure that the entire pipe is flowing, right? There's no point in, in unblocking a pipe at the very beginning if the end is still blocked, right? No point. But the most common treatment strategy when you're thinking about phase one estrogen detox is going to be using DIM or indole-3-carbonyl. So DIM is an, is an enzyme found in uh, the brassica family, so found in things like broccoli. And what it does is it helps to increase your conversion of E1 and E2, so estrone and estriol, down the um, CYP1A1 pathway, so down that good 2OH pathway, right? The pathway that we want it to go down. Um, so DIM is often a first go-to treatment in, in encouraging the body to take the good road, right? So we want to encourage it to take the good road. What's important with DIM is that because it actually does pull um, E1 and E2 out of circulation and kind of into the detox pathways, it can actually make low symptoms of low estrogen worse. That's why some patients do not do very well with DIM at all. Um, that is the most common kind of treatment strategy. Indole-3-carbonyl is also a great treatment strategy. Um, it actually requires some really good levels of stomach acid to be converted into DIM. So the end product that you want is actually DIM. Um, and you it requires large amounts of stomach acid to be converted. So in patients who are on proton pump inhibitors or who have low stomach acid, um, that would not, IC3 would not be a great treatment strategy because you're just not going to activate it. So sometimes patients will say to me, well, okay, I'll just eat more broccoli. So studies show that you have to eat a very large amount of the brassica family to actually get in the amount of DIM that we are looking for, for a treatment, uh, treatment base levels, right? So, um, while eating lots of vegetables is definitely a great thing in terms of actually making a difference with estrogen dominance, you're gonna need higher levels of DIM than that. So um, that kind of concludes our video on phase one estrogen detox. Remember the key component of this is, are you going down the good pathway? Are you going down the bad pathway? Or are you going down the okay pathway? And then next week we are going to be talking about um, methylation and COMT and your ability to package up that estrogen and move it into the GI tract to then excrete it, which is gonna be in two weeks. We're gonna talk about that. Um, what questions do you guys have about estrogen metabolism? Stay tuned for next week's video.